Hey guys, what's up? My name is Nigel, otherwise known as The Encounter, otherwise known as The Encounter, and welcome back to another FL Studio tutorial. And, uh, I guess I'm back. But in all seriousness, guys, uh, I don't know if I'm back yet. Uh, I would like to be, but right now my channel's in a weird limbo state and I don't want to push my luck. So I'm going to test out the waters with this tutorial, and if things seem to be going okay, then I'll be producing more tutorials over the summer, just like I used to do back in the day. This track in front of me is called Forest Interlude. It is a song, well, it's a remix of the song Forest Interlude from Donkey Kong Country 2 on the Super Nintendo, released back in 95. Um, let, me play it to you. let me play it for you real quick. So that's the track. Hope you liked it. Uh, I'm releasing an EP, a little bit of self promotion here. Hope you don't mind. I'm releasing an EP in a few days, almost, or like a few weeks, if anything, on June 11th called Dreams of DK Isle. And it's a four track EP where I remix songs from Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2. And be on the lookout for that if you're interested. If not, I hope this tutorial uh, helps you out. So, a little history. Back in the day, back in 07 or 06, I used to produce Hardstyle in whatever version of FL Studio was out back then. I think it was FL7 or something. And uh, I learned, in fact, before I even tell you that, here's a really shitty track I made back in the day. I told you it was pretty bad. But anyway, someone in some Hardstyle form somewhere in the internet, some dude was like, you should be doing this to your kicks to make them sound uh, punchier. Well, he wasn't telling me this. He was just telling someone this. And I started doing it. And ever since then, I've just straight up been doing that on all my kicks on every single song I've ever released from 07 until now and in beyond. And I'm going to show you that. So what I'm going to do is I've already cleared out my effects on the on all my drums except for claps. But I'll tell you why in a second. Um, but this is my, this is my drum pattern. It's a bit dry. And, uh, I, I want to tell you guys, first and foremost, when it comes to making music, the way I look at it, I always, the first thing I ever do is focus on drums. If the drums are bad, you have really no ground floor like your 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 song won't hold up as well your drums need to be punchy they need their the snares need to rip through the mix your hats need to be clear it just needs to sound it just needs to sound good if your kicks and your drums and whatever they if they sound bad or if they're lost in the mix it's going to be a little frustrating for the listener to like listen to your music and when you're making dark synth or you're making synth wave you're not working with a lot of instruments you're working with a bass line, a synth that does chords, a synth that maybe does arpeggios, and a synth that does leads. That's only four things. The rest are drums. So you need to make sure your drums are pretty good. So anyone can make a drum beat like the one I have laid out right here, but the secret to making your drums sound good comes down to EQing and distortion. And I'll explain to you those things right now so first things first you want to put your kicks onto a mixture track for me the default is kicks on one claps on two hats on three and snares on four kicks on one we're just going to select that and we're going to go to slot one and we're going to drop drop in fruity parametric eq the order of which you do these on matters uh believe it or not not a lot of people know that so if i were to put parametric eq on like eight or nine or ten or whatever the FL Studio program is going to process the EQ last. So if you want it to process e the parametric EQ first, you want to put it at the first slot. So we have this, and um, we're going to play the song. We're going to actually mute the uh, snares because I don't need that right now. So just looking at this, like this, these colors, I can tell there's a lot of frequencies back here I don't need. There's some frequencies up here that I would like to bring out. 
and this middle seems a bit chunky. So we're gonna EQ this and we're gonna work around it. What I always like to do first, I'm gonna lower this just a little bit, just so I can like speak over it. Um, what I always like to do is grab one with the mouse wheel, make the uh, band itself right over here. You can see the, uh, whatever these knobs are. You can mouse wheel up and fill it all the way up. I'm gonna bring it all the way down. In fact, I'm actually gonna bring it down to like there. And I'm gonna move two to where one was and I'm gonna raise two a little bit like that. We're gonna drop three because I don't care about anything over here. Maybe not that much. And we're gonna drop four as well. We're gonna drop five just a little bit below that median, like that middle. If you see like this, this line where seven's at, that purple line, we're gonna put five right below that. Six, we're gonna start raising up. And then seven, we're gonna raise up a little bit more, but towards the end, maybe move six over, maybe move it up five. So you have this like weird kind of wave that just keeps traveling upwards. Um, just as an explanation real quick, uh, I like my kicks to have a base obviously, but not that much. That's why I get rid of one. And the secret to EQing drums, the secret to pretty much EQing all your drums except maybe hats is lies in the uh the four here dip this just a little bit below that middle line uh i guess it would be zero if you look right here just a little bit below and you're gonna get your drums sounding super crisp especially on snares i promise you so as long as your drums look kind of like this your i mean your kicks rather you should be good i have i have a link to the preset i personally use which is right here which see, again, it looks kind of similar, kind of a wave that goes up and down and then back up. I have a link to this preset as well as the other presets that I've made in the description if you guys are interested. Um, but let's listen to the kicks. All right, that sounded pretty good. So next thing I like to do is add some reverb. Now, back in the day, uh, hard sell days, up until my first release as the encounter, which was 2014's Family. I used to drench my kicks in, in reverbs. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was that same dude in the hostile forms that told me this. Um, this is wrong, by the way. Don't drench your kicks in reverbs. <laughs> Do it moderately. Be, be super modest about it. So you want to give your kicks room, right? You want your kicks to punch. The way to give them room, the way to cheat is to give them reverb. But you don't want to give them too much reverb. You want to give them just enough so it's audible but not so much that it muddies up anything so i like to drop the size down to like this much maybe maybe a little more like that and bring the diff down to whatever the square is and so you're gonna get something that sounds like oops i just turned it off that sounds like this oh but nigel that sounds bad yeah i know it sounds terrible but the secret lies in the knob you lower the volume knob pretty much all the way. Like I wouldn't go any more. You can, if you look up here on the hints panel, you can tell your percentage. I'm gonna go no more than 15 usually. I'm gonna try what 15 sounds like. Yeah, that sounds all right. I'm gonna maybe bring it down just a little bit more, like 10. Yeah, that's a lot better. That's it. That's all you need. That gives it enough room right there. Next thing you want to do is a uh, fruity wave shaper. Uh, this is, I believe, some type of distortion plugin. I don't really know. I don't really mess with this plugin too much other than putting it on my drums. Um, but basically what you want to do, and this is a secret, by the way. This is the number one thing I learned from that hard sell dude like 15 years ago or whatever. He was like, put fruity wave shapers on your kicks. He just said that. So for the longest, I've just been keeping at this, at this default. But at one point in my career, I figured out that if you were to take your uh, clicker, your right click, and then right click up here and make this arrow type of thing that looks towards the top left, this pretty much opens up your kicks and your snares and your hats and your claps and it, pretty much anything else. It opens it up to a whole nother degree. So I'm gonna play you the, uh, the current drum beat we have right now without the Fruity Wave Shaper. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the Fruity Wave Shaper back in right after this finishes doing its thing. All right, it's on now and it's off. On. 
Oh, I'm recording. I don't want to do that. So you can hear that it really punches things up. And if it's too much for you, you can take this and you can drag it down. The point is you want to kind of get it in this arrow pointing upwards to the left. You don't want to get it down here because it's not going to sound too good. You want to get it as close as you don't want to also do it like this because it's going to sound trash. Yeah. I think that's probably why he told me. I, you know what? That's probably why I found out on a hard soft form because if I do this. We're making hard soft again, baby. And on top of that, you also want to add in a soft clipper so that whatever, if it clips, if for whatever reason the distortion clips, then this will come save it. And that's drums. <laughs> that's how I do my drum. That's how I do my kicks. Next up is snare. So I'm already hearing some bass on the snare. So you want to add in some pretty parametric EQ. And we're going to move this over. I can already tell right here. I'm not liking this. So we're gonna drop one. We're gonna slightly drop two, just a little bit. That's good. I'm gonna drop four. And you can already hear the crisp, the crispiness of it coming out when I drop four. I'm gonna drop five a little bit, raise six, and then bring seven all the way over here and raise it up. Maybe drop six a little bit. You wanna kinda get that same pattern you had on the kicks, but for the snare, you wanna kind of Kind of just get things a little bit more higher. Yeah, that sounds good. And of course, uh, you want to add in reverb. That's always a good idea when it comes to snares. Why is my reverb thing coming up? There it is. So this is a for the reverb too, as always. And personally, I would use a Valhalla vintage verb for snares, but since we're doing this the old fashioned way using built in fruity free loops, uh, VSTs, we're going to do it like this. So I know a lot of you synthwave and AE enthusiasts like the gated snare technique. I do not. I think gated snares sound terrible. <laughs> so I'm going to just show you a way to get snares to kind of sound a little gated, but not really. So don't call it gated snares. Don't get mad at me. You want basically to keep everything the way it is. Um, and you want to just bring up this decay up to like maybe 2.2 seconds, two seconds around there. Maybe bring up the dampening to like six kilohertz around there. And you want to bring the size just slightly down, like maybe to 25. Diff is fine. Speed maybe down a little bit to 25 as well. And so you're going to hear this. Oh, it sounds terrible. Well, yeah, it always does. You're going to drop the reverb down again on the snare. Uh, not not as much as the uh, kicks, but, you know, a good amount. Maybe 20. Let's see what 20 sounds like. Yeah. You want to you wanna hear the actual snare? And then you want to hear the reverb. But I don't like doing gated snares because I feel like sometimes you, you can't really control how much reverb you have at the tail. I like to do it this way uh, because I can control how much I have on the tail if I were to go into the decay and just drop it down to like 1.5. That's good. Yeah. Maybe bring up the wet a little bit. Nah, not that much. I, I went from 50% to 52%. So... It's up to you how much of a change you want to make, but that's pretty much it for snares. And again, the secret sauce, man, fruity wave shaper. I'm telling you, this shit's gonna open up your drum, your, your snares. Just listen. Ready? They're punchy. And you want to put a, a soft clipper. And that's all it is, man. Same thing with hats. Uh, well, with hats on this song, I have actually two loops that I'm using. One's a hat, hi hat, and one's a uh, shaker. So let me actually loop this. So again, we're gonna open up parametric EQ. We're gonna take a look at the frequencies. We're gonna see. Okay, well, I see seven. I'm gonna raise seven up a little bit just so it, I kind of get the bulk of that. We'll also raise six a little bit up. We're going to drop five. We're going to drop four. We're actually going to raise five. I lied. And I don't want any base whatsoever on these. 
Maybe like that. That's good. And again, reverb, just slight amount of reverb. Just to give it some room. Mm. Maybe like a room size of 15 would sound pretty good with this. And uh, we're gonna also add in, we're gonna do it, Wave Shaper. So now, like you hear, it, it's a lot more brighter and a lot more clearer. I'm gonna put a soft clipper on that as well. Those frequencies might be too high. You you want to be careful of raising the seven frequency too much. It's just like the one where if you got a lot of bass, it's gonna get too muddy. Well, with the seven, if you raise it too much, it's gonna get really shrilly, and that's never a good time. So you want to kind of find a sweet spot. Maybe like that. And guys, that's pretty much it. You've done drums. Let's hear what it sounds like with the full beat. Oh, if I were to just remember to unmute kicks. Oh my god, I can't do anything right. And uh, if we were to turn off the effects... Look at the difference. We went from sounding like boring, dry old oatmeal to sounding like a motherfucker, dude. You did it. So um, I'm going to end it there. Uh, guys, thanks for watching this short little tutorial. I will go into details about how to mix the rest of this track. Um, and I'll also tell you how to make saxophone sound great. But thanks for watching, guys. My name has been Nigel, otherwise known as The Encounter, otherwise known as Hot Mopeds. If you guys have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments below. If you guys want to see more tutorials in the future, please also let me know which tutorials you'd like to see. And feel free to reach me on Twitter or Facebook or anything, guys. Thanks for sticking around. And uh, I'll catch you guys later. See ya.